today it, we're having the parable of two debtors. That That's the lesson that was given me. And, and when I got that lesson, I was really excited about it too, because I it's what really one of my favorites, but you know, I, I've got several favorites in the word of God. But anyway, um, I don't know if um, some of the other teachers uh, um, covered um, uh, the the definition of a parable. So I, you know, I I went and I I gathered this and um, can you see my screen? What is a parable? Yes. Okay. What is a parable? A parable is a short story that teaches a moral or spiritual lesson. The word parable comes from the word from a Greek word meaning comparison. So showing you, you know, um, a way that you can understand in, in, in plain terms. Uh, a parable uses symbolism, simile, and metaphor to illustrate the lesson. Parables are often found in, in religious texts, such as stories told by Jesus in the Bible. And that's what we're discussing today. So um, uh, it's found in Luke. Uh, let's see. I need to change this. Um, um, the way I'm seeing, seeing this seeing my is it blocking your view too as far as um no we can see you but we're only seeing the the title slide okay yeah well I haven't started yeah. yet can you see the whole title slide though yes yeah. okay so it says Luke 40 mm -hmm. and 50 in this NIB. And so, okay, let's get started. So first of all, <laughs> excuse me. to give it context, I start starting here at the 36th verse and it says, and uh, one of the Pharisees um, desired that, that he would eat with him, I'm talking about Jesus. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which, which was a sinner, when she knew that she had sat down at meat in the Pharisee's house, that Jesus sat down, sat meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. So we look at this, and so this is the scene. They're in, they're in uh, this Pharisee's house, and I'm not sure what their houses looked like back then, but you know, um, I'm sure if it was a Pharisee, it was a fine house and he was sitting there and they were gathered together and had a gathering and, you know, they were talking and probably had some, uh, something to eat and drink. And, and so here comes this woman and um, she, when she found out, she came on in and she said she stood behind him and, um, uh, weeping, crying. She's standing behind him, it, you know, get the scene and, and she's crying and she's, and she's taken and her, with her tears, she, she begins to wash his feet. Um, just, you know, she's crying so much and, and, you know, she's overwhelmed and, and, and began to wipe uh, his feet with the hairs on his head. And then after that, she kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now, I don't know about you, but if you're at somebody's house and this is taking place, I'm like, wow, whoa, okay. Um, you know, really, did you see that? I mean, are you checking this out? Um, so she made a spectacle of herself, right? She she just, she did. And, and did she care? No, it didn't appear not. And and she wasn't ashamed about it, and she was uninhibited. She was free with it. So, um, you know, didn't care who saw. Um, 
So uh, from from you guys, what 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 would you think if I mean really if you saw something like that, you know, if you're 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 visiting somewhere, what would you think? Anybody? Thoughts? Yeah, maybe a little over the top. Probably shocked. Yeah. Right. Wondering yeah. what was going on. Yeah. 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 It was it was odd. It was bizarre. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so um, then it taught, I'm, I'm going to go to the next slide. And we're, and so in various versions of the Bible, I in the NIV, it says, um, uh, well, it, in, in, oh, excuse me. Oh my God. And go back. I'm sorry. Um, the NIV said, calls it a, uh, called the woman, a woman that in, in that town who lived a sinful life. And in the message Bible, it says a woman of the village, the town harlot. Uh, in the living Bible, it's a woman of the streets, a prostitute. Um, in the voice, it said, a woman from the city, notorious as a woman of ill repute. Um, let's see. And in the King James Version, it says it called her a woman in the city, which was a sinner. And so um, I looked at a lot of different other versions and that, that calling her a sinner was the, the most commonly used term amongst all the versions and so you know she's a sinner and i mean we all are sinners but uh she lived a sinful life and she's and, you know it's a bit more descriptive she's a harlot she was a prostitute and i don't you know know much about prostitution but i do know that um you know when women are in prostitution they they do it all you know stuff we we couldn't imagine or think about right it's you know there's nothing that they wouldn't do, right, for the money. So um, it, it made me think, wow, since this woman, we're talking about this woman now, she uh, didn't mind doing that for Jesus. She thinks she, I guess maybe the thought is, I've done so much worse, you know, in, in my life. And to show him my gratitude and my love I'm, this is what I want to do. So that just, and it, what that right there in just a little sidebar, it shows us that God can use what we were, regardless of how bad we were or the, the things, ugly things we did, that God can use it for his glory. So now we're going to get into uh, the parable itself. Uh -oh. Oops, I'm sorry. This is this is it's really getting bad off. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm trying to um, use the slideshow. Let's see. I need to move this. This is in my way. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, Luke 40, uh, 740 starts with, in the NIV version, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. He said, tell me, teacher. I will tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one that had a bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. So... You know, that just, you know, it's telling there's two debtors and um, which one would, was hat, was more grateful? The one with the bigger sin. So that woman, and she was such a sinner, and they, as they described, she, she had a big debt that um, Jesus paid the price for. So um, let's see.
And he turned to the woman. Jesus turned to the woman and said, Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my hair with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whosoever has been forgiven, little loves little. If he's been, so if you've been, great love is shown, but if whoever has been forgiven little loves little, because, you know, it's not that much to, to, to forgive or, or they, you know, it's pittance to them slide and Jesus said to her your sins are forgiven the other guests began to say among themselves who is this that forgives sins Jesus said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace so what he's telling her is you know don't you know you you you're clean you, you are clean go in peace and and stay clean you know um so this was a story of redemption of of two debtors and so he just that that little um illustration showing i you know i had a big debt and i have uh, a lot to be grateful for over here someone else has a little debt and they have a little to be grateful for but jesus paid it all for us all so in Isaiah 1 and 18, in the King James Version, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And this was in the Old Testament. And he was telling, uh, uh, telling us about about Jesus and what he's gonna he's coming to do for us. So in um Romans five uh one through eight um therefore being justified by faith we have peace through with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work of patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make us not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, and when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for Scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that is, I mean, that is why, I, I don't know about you, but that's why when I go to church, I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. Woo, hallelujah, I could cry right now. Because God did it for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was sinking deep in sin, but God, he, he saved me. He rescued me. He He brought me out and he brought me out all right too. Yeah, I, you know, I thank God for all that he's done. I, I mean, I was sinking, but his love, it lifted me sinking deep. So I thank God for it. And um, I totally understand about the debt. And so I, you know, have another, uh, you know, he paid it in full. Hallelujah with his blood. Yeah. His blood, he paid it all. Hallelujah. He, and not just for me. That's what makes him so wonderful. Because I'm not that wonderful. You know, what the, what the scriptures say, for one, scarcely will somebody die for unrighteous. But yet for somebody that's full of sin, he, he gave his life. He got up on that cross and he didn't come down. And so I, you know, for that, 
I thank him. And, and, and you know, we can just rejoice in that. So um, yeah, okay. I, I thought about this, uh, you know, uh, it make it more tangible today's terms um, that the average uh, cost of student debt is uh, $28,950. And if you go for an advanced degree, it can average about $130,000 debt through the end of it. And, um, but then it says here in the head, this is the headlines, the real headlines, Biden forgives another five billion in student loan debt um, for uh, 74,000 uh, people, um, um, student loan borrowers. So um, and that was in the headlines in, in, on the 19th of January. So um, you, you look at this and uh, so they're, 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 they're picketing, they're, they're demonstrating and um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take creative license and say this is before the headlines. And so say this person, they owed 15,000. This, this guy here, he owes 5,000. Um, she, she, she owes, she owes, she's got an advanced degree. She owes 130,000. And this guy here, he, he owes, he owes maybe 20,000. Which, which of the people here <laughs> is going to be the happiest out of them all? It's going to be, it's going to be this girl right here. Because, uh, hey, $130,000 wiped clean? That's something to shout about. Yeah. <laughs>